If there's one interesting thing about homes in Southern California is that the majority of them have this beam that runs parallel to the garage door. And usually that beam requires that the track assembly be converted to a low head track assembly. And usually when you're replacing springs on a low head track assembly, there's a number of things to take into consideration. Let's party. Hey party people, we are out here at this property right now. We're looking at a one and three eight inch thick steel back insulated garage door by Amar. If you notice right here, we are dealing with a zero low head track assembly. And the springs that are currently on this door, we have a 207 wire by two inch by 21.5 inch long. The bigger spring over here, which happens to be broken, I don't know if you can see that right there that it's broken, but basically that is a 225 wire by two inch diameter by 24 inches long. Now the reason why we are paying close attention to that because that's a mismatch spring configuration but what really is the important factor that is the defining factor to this type of door system is this zero low head track so if you were replacing the springs what springs would you put well let me show you what i did <laughs> Okay, so we just finished the spring replacement for the steel back garage door. Now, something I didn't mention in the beginning is that this is a 16 wide by six foot, 10 inch tall. Now they made that modification so that way they could clear the headroom space of the opening with the low head track. And I think it was a smart choice, mainly because in the future, if this customer wanted to convert to a 12 inch track radius, well, they could going with a side mounted motor, but right now they have a LiftMaster belt drive motor on here. And honestly, I mean, you know, they're fine the way they are, but if it were me, especially once they plan on replacing the door, I would go with a 12 inch track radius, get the door to open up. It has the space, even though that this beam right here is you know obstructing the beam in itself this beam to the structure of the home uh, is not a hindrance when you go with a side mounted garage door opener motor so clearly that's one advantage of going with a wall mount garage door motor and it's also another advantage of shortening the height of your door so that you're able to accomplish that now some guys would probably want to stay with that seven foot height and you could because you would still clear that seven foot height opening yet you might have a little bit of a pitch and because they do have somewhat of a high profile vehicle a, a van a minivan i don't know i think every little modification helps under these circumstances now what springs that i put on pretty simple I put a pair of 225 by one and three quarter by 29 inch long what it had before was a 207 2 inch by 21.5 and a 225 2 inch by 24 naturally some guys would probably think okay I'm gonna go three lengths longer or three sizes longer to uh, 225 one and three quarter 27 but I went with the 29 because I know that with this low head track assembly it's going to be a little bit tighter or hot the door will be a little bit tighter it'll go up by itself uh, once you reach or i should say once you make that turn on that top track i know that's probably getting too technical too geeky on the garage door configuration and yet i think it's an interesting point an important point to keep in account especially if you're trying to replace or find springs for a door this size this thick and with this type of configuration As expressed in this video, replacing torsion springs on a low head track assembly does take some time to figure out. And although you can utilize the same principles as you would to configure springs on a standard door, but that low head track factor will definitely come into play 
Putting strong springs on a door like that might make that door hot or very light and open up by itself, and that's what you want to avoid. In fact, let's keep this party going. Go ahead and check out this video right here on some of the things that you want to avoid when replacing torsion springs or determining torsion spring size. As always, I want to thank you all for parting with me. Y'all stay safe.